Hello, hi there, how are you? And welcome to the Levers and Pulley screencast. I'm Jose Rosa, science specialist at the Mason Pilot Elementary School in Roxbury. And if you've seen my other screencast, you should be used to my action figure collection. Now, did you notice anything different in each screencast? No? Well, go back and see my other screencasts. I have been changing something on each one. Now, during this screencast, I will be going over the last investigation of the Levers and Pulley Science Kit, Investigation 4, which is titled Pulleys at Work. This investigation has four parts, sorry, three parts. Part one, effort and pulley systems. Part two, measuring distance. And part three, choosing your own investigation. Now, if your schedule is like mine, you might not have time to do part three especially since it will take four to six sessions. Just do the best you can getting through as many lessons as possible. Now by now, students should be adept at creating the four pulley systems. The single fixed pulley, the single movable pulley, the single fixed single movable pulley system with effort moving down, and the single fix, single movable pulley system with the effort moving up. Now students should also have had enough practice with measuring effort using spring scales. It's important that they be adept at both measuring and building the pulley systems. So what data are students collecting in these two investigations, in these two parts, parts one and two? Well, let's look over the data table. As you can see, this data sheet will be used for both part one and part two of this investigation. Part one focuses on the number of pulleys, direction of effort, weight of the load in newtons, effort needed to lift the load in newtons, and the number of ropes lifting the load. Now this last one is very tricky for students. I found that my students find it difficult trying to figure out how to count the number of ropes lifting a load. Let's spend a few moments analyzing these two single fix, single movable pulleys. How many ropes are lifting the first one? What's, the different, what's different between them? Well, for starters, some students will correctly state that there's only one rope. After all, in reality, there is just one piece of rope. So students are expected to think beyond a single piece of rope and look at the pulley systems as having sections of rope. When the effort moves downward in this section, The rope is actually changing the direction of the effort. That is, to move the load up, you pull down. Hence, this third section is not really lifting the load. Now, the second pulley system has the effort moving upward. That is, to move the load up, the effort also goes up. Another way to look at it is to focus on the supporting ropes. These two ropes are supporting the load. This rope is not. In this pulley system, all three ropes are supporting the load. Wow, I'm getting dizzy just trying to explain this. I can just imagine how a fifth grader would feel. The bottom line is that this last pulley system has three ropes or sections lifting the load. This is very, very important. Students will be expected to find patterns and relationships among the different sets of data. If they have the wrong number of ropes, the data will be incorrect. But before I go over the data for parts one and parts two, let's go over how students will set up their pulley systems and how they will measure the effort and the distance that effort and load move. For starters, students will build each pulley system one at a time and lift the load five centimeters. Notice the binder clip and the meter stick on the table. This is where you place the pulley systems. Remember to have them add 0.5 newtons when pulling down. For part two, they will measure the distance that the effort needs to move each time the pulley system lifts the load five centimeters. 
Now here's some videos showing this process. This is measuring effort in a single fixed pulley system. Notice the paper clip on the top of the, of the scale. The paper clip is important to hold the scale to the rope. Now here's a single movable pulley system. By the way, you're using two loads for this section. Again, a single movable pulley system. Always remember to check the scales, make sure they're at zero before you get started. I actually made a mistake on this one and I had to um, go back and fix it. Here's a single fixed, single movable pulley system with effort going down. Again, use the paper clip to hold the scale to the rope. And lastly, single fixed, single movable pulley system with direction moving, sorry, the direction of the effort moving up. Okay, so let's look at a student's completed data table. Oh, before we move on, let's just, this is where I corrected the scale. The last reading was actually incorrect. Okay, so let's look at a student's completed data table. Let's focus on part one for now. Which variable do you think determines the effort needed to lift the load? Is it the number of pulleys? Is it the number of ropes? As you can see, the load is constant at 4.8 newtons. The effort is equal to the load for, a sing for the single fixed pulley. It's half the load for the last next two pulley systems, and it's one third the load for the last pulley system or the single fixed, single mobile pulley with effort moving up. See a pattern? What relationships do you notice? As you can see, the number of ropes is the variable that determines effort. So if you know how many ropes are supporting or lifting a load, and you know the weight of the load, you can calculate the effort. This is really cool, amazing stuff. So how about part two? What does distance have to do with pulleys or other simple machines? Students have been introduced to advantage before. Now they are introduced to the disadvantage of using pulleys. You could say that part two of this investigation is all about disadvantage. So here's a video of a single fixed pulley. Notice the cardboard. Notice the lines. Between those two lines is five centimeters of, of length. So you have to start at one point, you make a mark, move the load up five centimeters, make another mark, and then you measure the space between those two marks that you made. Now, if you notice how I have left the load hanging, that's just a little trick that I learned. So you can see that one was five centimeters. Now here's a single movable pulley. Also notice how I lift or I pull the cardboard forward a little bit. This is, um, it just makes it easier to make the marks and to hold the pulley system in place. Now, if you notice the distance that the effort moves now is twice the last one. Okay, here's a single fix, single movable direction of effort going down. Again, you make the marks, then you measure the space between them. You're looking for patterns. Students are basically looking for patterns in their data. And here's the last one, single fix, single movable, with effort moving up. This is the one which have has three ropes supporting the, the load. Again, you lift the load five centimeters. Look, unfortunately, I have to stop here. I will continue this screencast in a second bit part. Um, goodbye for now. I'll be right back.